episode five, five to one places to eat. If you wonder why. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Why do you um, love saying dickies? Dickies. Okay. Six. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of 5 to 1, the best hour of your day and the best list podcast in existence. 5 to 1 is all about the countdown from a panel of experts on a different topic each week. Today we are featuring the best places to eat and our style of counting down from 5 to 1. We have a special guest today. Jet spilled the beans last week, but in case you missed it, Cade is not able to record with us today. In his place, we have contracted with a very special guest for this episode, so stay tuned. Our panel today consists of three foodie connoisseurs. I am Cracker Barrel Chris. You like that one, Jet? Not really, no. Okay, why don't you pull your chair up closer so you don't have to lean in so far, yeah? Okay. Okay. And I am joined by my son, Jet in the Box. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. So cheesy. Yeah, it is. And our very special guest, my wife, Hooters Hershey. Oh, I like that. All right, all right. Uh, Miss Hershey, do you think this topic is a good one for us three to discuss today? Absolutely. And can you expand on why? Because we love to eat. Very true, very true. Especially me. Especially you. Jed, our little piglet. His name, nickname from birth was Piglet. Cade was Turtle. Because he lifted his head up like a turtle does, right? And Jet was Piglet because he was pretty chunky when he was a baby. Ten pounds, four ounces. He had rolls on his forehead. And he loved to eat. He still does. He, and he eats junk food, right? Right. All right. Am I talking to myself here today? No. <laughs> okay. Jet, you love to go out to eat, right? Right. You must have a lot of opinion on this topic. Why do you like to go out to eat so much? need to do it to survive so you just eat all the crap you yeah, want. Yeah, but you could eat you could eat at home and survive just fine. Why do you like to go out to eat? Because you're not in this lazy house all day sitting down and eating. Get off your butt and eat somewhere. How about the person who slaved for your food, like your mom? Um... Wrong answer. All right, all right. So I was hoping to get a little bit more conversation out of that, but we'll go ahead and move on. Um, I think this is a really good topic for us this week, especially in Cade's absence, because that poor kid can't ever eat anyways. <laughs> he uh, he's you know has to be so careful during the wrestling season that a meal with any salt or carbs is a major treat, period. Jet, you get to pig out all the time, uh, which is maybe why you like to eat out so much. Are you guys ready to get started? Yes. yes. Okay, well... Who will go first? I think I think Jet, uh, you should go first so you can show Mom how we do it. How does that sound? Great. Number five. My number five is Cece's. Dad, my dad kind of hates it. So does my mom. But all right, my mom absolutely loves chocolate. She thinks it's so good, and those brownies sure have a lot of chocolate in it. And she think and she doesn't like it. I don't know why, but. Any kind of chocolate you like, but not the brownies. I, you know, I thought about CC's and I almost even put it on my honorable mention list. And I know every time you ask to go, me and mom are like, no, pick somewhere else. And, and really the truth behind that is because the pizza is not very good there. And if we're going to like go out and eat pizza, we want to eat good pizza. But when I was a kid, um, CC's was a very special treat for me. One, it was the only place I knew of that had a giant big screen TV at the time. It was like, a rarity. Okay. Two, they had an arcade that was fun. And three, they had unlimited amounts of pizza. So we used to go on Fridays as a special treat. Sometimes my baseball team would go after our games, um, to celebrate like winning or losing or whatever, just to have fun. Uh, so I get why you like CC's. I used to really like CC's when I was in high school, uh, at a wrestling tournament, I had to, I know I wrestled 152 my sophomore year and I had never even come close to busting weight all year. I was, I was several pounds under. And then one day I woke up and we had a duel and I was over by two pounds. Um, and I, I freaked out because I'd never had to worry about it all year. So I put on 
layers and layers of sweats and I wrestled, you know, for an hour and a half. And then, um, I didn't eat all day. I didn't eat lunch and I weighed in after school and I dropped 14 pounds or 12 pounds, something ridiculous like that. Just in water weight. I got to wrestle down two weight classes and I killed the guy and it was, it was awesome. But, um, I was really hungry. So afterwards we went out to CC's and I had 36 pieces of pizza. How much did you weigh? Uh, I gained uh, six pounds back that night and I was back up to my normal weight in no time. Wow, 36 pounds, 36 pieces. <laughs> yeah, CC's, their pieces are smaller than like normal pizza. I don't know if it really counts. It does. 36 p- pieces of pizza is like 500 pieces of Reese's. Like that's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot of pizza. Mom, do you have any uh, thoughts on CC's pizza that you'd like to contribute I like their thin crust pizza that they do now that's the flatbread, garlic, buttery crust. But other than that, you're right. The pizza there is just all right. And they do have good cinnamon rolls. I'll give them that. Their cinnamon rolls are good. And so is their um, chicken noodle soup. And brownies and pizza and every type of pizza and the arcade is fun and they have good drinks and it's good quality. They do have, depending on the location... They do have a pretty good salad bar. Yeah, sometimes they're sal- it's hit or miss. Yeah. Sometimes it's pretty crappy. All right, anything else to talk about on CeCe's Pizza? Nope. 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 All right. Uh, Miss Hooters Hershey, <laughs> what do you have for your number five? My number five is um, an Italian restaurant. I wonder if you could guess which Italian restaurant this is going to be. All right. My guess. Can I guess before you talk? Yeah. Porta di Roma. Ding, ding. You got it. Porta di Roma in downtown Dallas is not only the best place that they make spaghetti and meatballs, but they do make really good pizzas as well. And it holds a special place in my heart because we used to live above Porta di Roma in a loft in downtown Dallas. So you could literally smell the garlic bread (laughs) from where we lived, um, from where we lived. And it's just... We always ate there, and it's it was it was so good. Jet, do you remember that place? I mean, we've been many times. Um, yeah, I remember it some. I went it. I went to it like in 2014. <laughs> we vis- <laughs> we visited it. We, we we go every time we're downtown, basically. Yeah. Still thinking 2014. Okay, well, we might have in 2014. I don't know. Um, I I wish we had eaten there more when we lived there. I feel like we didn't take advantage of it enough. Well, I ate there during lunch when you were at work, so I think I ate there more than anyone did. You probably did. And we also had a press box grill as part of our building that was really good, too. It was right next door to Porta de Roma. And in between, I never ate there. There was a pho place. I didn't eat pho back then. I wish I had taken advantage Uh of it. What do you think of the um, other Porta de Roma that was close to our residence in Plano afterwards not as good not nearly as good as the one in downtown I don't know what it is in downtown maybe it's their marinara sauce is different but it it didn't taste the same as it did yeah I agree not as good and uh my favorite thing at Porter their pizza is good but the best thing in my opinion is their spaghetti and meatballs it's fantastic (laughs) I finally remembered the pizza is way better than that crap which one is crap the, uh, the spaghetti. The spa- oh, you're saying the spaghetti there is crap and the pizza was way but better? They're both good, but c- compared to the pizza, it's crap. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Jet with his, uh, you know, don't hold your punches, man. Just let us know how you really feel. All right. I'll go on to my number five unless anybody has anything else to say about Porta de Roma. Nope. Go ahead. Why are you trying to look at my list, huh? Nice. Keep your eyes off hey, my I list. I don't want to look at your list. You know how mad I get when people look yeah, at my list. Yeah, you do get pretty mad. All right. Well, don't look at mine. All right. My number five, I picked the food trucks in Austin. Oh, man. I was forgot about that. They're on South Congress. There's a couple locations. I like the ones on South Congress. What are you pointing at? Your elbow is on I'm the table. I'm not bumping it, though. It doesn't make any noise. Um, really fun atmosphere. There's lots of people having fun. Uh, you see people out there with their kids families or you see college students there you see people walking around with their dogs out there it's just a good time we always make it a point to go there when we go to austin which is pretty often 
And um, there's lots of stuff to do nearby that's in wa- within walking distance south- on South Congress. There's lots of little shops, and there's Amy's Ice Cream, and Home Slice Pizza, and a lot of cool stuff to do around there. Um, and we always have a lot of fun there. I've got a lot of f- fun memories of the food trucks and uh, and and of Austin in general. And it's it's part of our tradition to go there every time we go to Austin, weather permitting, right? Um, and the food there isn't bad. I mean, there's a lot of different options. You can you can get dessert, you can get Thai food, you can get uh, pizza, you can get snow corn cones. dogs, you can get Hot snow dogs. cones. Yeah, there's lots of stuff there. So, uh, Jet, what do you think about the food trucks? Do you remember going there? Yeah, it was a long time ago. I remember the last time we went to Austin. Um, I didn't get. We didn't go to the food trucks. It was closed. That's why it was on the Sunday. We tried. What about you, Hooters Hershey? Do you have any um, opinions on the food trucks you'd like to share? Yes, my favorite food truck there is uh, Coat and Tie. They have amazing pad thai and they have amazing spring rolls as well. And I have yet to find a a pad thai that I like here in Dallas. So that is a good one. All right. Any any other thoughts on the food trucks before we move on? Nope. Number four. Who is that, General Grievous or something? <laughs> That's me. I made those today, and I played around with oh, it in, in Audacity. I remember that. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? It sounds, it sounds like Transformers. It does yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it does. Bit. sounds like Bum- or Optimus Prime. <laughs> All right, Jess, so what do you got for... Number four. Um, let me check again. I forgot. <laughs> How do you forget so quickly? He's, He's ruffling a- his list down there. Oh, a Dickies. I, <laughs> I, I love Dickies. I love saying it. If you wonder why. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Why do um, you love saying Dickies? Dickies. Okay. So can, can you explain? Because I don't get it. What do you, what is, why do you love saying Dickies? I just love saying Dickies. It's just something I love saying. Dickies. It doesn't sound funny. Dickies, Dickies, Dickies. dickies. <laughs> okay. Are you not going to explain? No, okay. I will not. Okay, it's Dickies because I've known that restaurant for so long. Uh, I think I went. I've known it since Frisco, right? Yes, baby. I I love it so much. It has really good food. I always love the ham there, and the macaroni. You did. And the ice cream, everything. It's really good. And the best part about Dickies and Frisco, since you brought Frisco up, is that the kids got to eat for free. <laughs> So mommy and daddy like that too. Yeah, the Dickies, uh, most of them, and I think the one in Frisco now too, but most of them are kids eat free on Sundays. Sundays only. Uh, the one in Frisco, when we lived there, was kids eat free all the time, which was, uh, yeah, great for me and mom. What's your What's your favorite thing to eat there? The one, if you had to pick one thing. Um, honestly, I'll probably go with the ham. I like the ham so much there. I thought you I thought, usually got the turkey. Yeah, turkey, whatever. It doesn't matter. No, it was a turkey, but I don't think that's your favorite because you know why? You always loved their rolls. I, I the did. Honey. I did, but I always, I just love the turkey a My lot. question is, why do they make it hard to get honey there? Why don't they put it? They have all their options. That you, it's, a, it's almost like a buffet where you just point and choose what you want. You go to the condiments bar, they've got... Pickles and barbecue sauce and all the and to get honey you got to go like ask for the secret stash that they keep hidden underneath the counter in the back. Like, why do they make it so hard to get honey for your rolls? Well, it's like when if a robber comes in and says, "Give me the honey," and I'm like, I don't know where it is. Look for it. I don't know. And he's like, "I've been to this restaurant before, underneath the drawer now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that, Jet Hershey. Do you have any additional thoughts on Dickies? Yes, I love their self-serve free ice cream as well. <laughs> yeah, they do have the ice cream there. And they have good ribs. Um, I like to get like a stuffed baked potato there, but I change my mind hmm. every time I go. Mm-hmm. And there are other barbecue options that I like as far as the quality of the food a lot more than Dickie's. However, we did used to go there a lot and the kids eat free makes it a good choice, I think, for your list. And we get free cups. Yeah. yeah, we have like we a have stash. like a, a billion. We used to have a lot more. I don't know what happened to all the little the the kid size cups that you take from there are were my favorite ones. And yeah, those are almost all gone. I think we only like four left. We used to have probably like forty, 40 of those. Yeah, <laughs> we did have a lot. All right, anything else to say about Dickies? Dickies. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> Good job, Jet. All right, what do you got for number four, Hershey? I picked a sushi restaurant that we all know and love, especially Chris Moore since he gets the bill every month. (laughs) I love Bluefish. They have the best sushi in the whole world and they make it very fresh. And Cade, who's not here today, is loves Bluefish as well. So Um, I think is Bluefish the one that we just went to? Yes. Okay. On Kate's birthday. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't eat sushi, so I can't comment too much, but I do like one plate there and I've gotten it the last two times that we've gone. The sizzling rock. Yeah. You get Kobe steak, little strips of Kobe steak, and they bring out a really hot rock and some butter and some, I guess it's soy sauce, some type of sauce. And you cook the little pieces of Kobe beef on the hot rock and then eat it right away. And I get it with a little bit of rice too. And it's really good and it's fun. And I like to cook my own meat and then eat it immediately afterwards. Yeah, they have a really nice ambiance. I mean, it's just... It's very, fancy. It's kind of fancy. And expensive. Jet, you got any thoughts on bluefish? Well, I don't think it's that fancy if it's just a rock. No, the whole the whole, restaurant. The whole restaurant is oh, fancy. The, yeah, the restaurant, but not just a rock is fancy. I thought you liked the rock. I do like the rock, but it isn't fancy. No, okay. I thought you liked the rock. Oh, yeah, I, I like them. When did I say I didn't? I'm just giving you a hard time. I don't obviously have any sushi restaurants on my list because I don't eat it. But if I were to put one on there, I actually would have picked um, Tokyo, <laughs> which is uh, for you guys that are not from the Dallas slash Addison area. It is a, I say, moderately expensive uh, sushi buffet type restaurant, kind of, but not buffet in the typical you know, like furs buffet. It's it's actually pretty fancy and pretty expensive. Um, and and Cade picked that restaurant. I want to say five years in a row. Feels like more than that. But for yes. his birthday meal, we would go there for his birthday and 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 other times. But I remember his birthday specifically because he would always pick it, and they would bring him these little um, kind of like por- porcelain or ceramic. Yeah, I guess ceramic uh, kitties that I I see them all the time in in Chinese. No, no, excuse me, Japanese type restaurants where they've got the little kitty with their little arm waving like this, like a clock or something. His his didn't do that. It was just more like a like a pen holder type thing or a piggy bank type thing. But we still have them. They're in his closet. Um, I think we have five of them in there for the five years in a row we went for his birthday. You remember those, Jet? Yeah. Yeah. So anything else to talk about with Bluefish or Tokyo? Nope. We're good. Good. Okay, I'll go on to my number four. I picked another Austin restaurant for my number four. Oh, Magnolia I, Cafe. I was just going to say. Oh, I should have let you guess. Yeah. I'm sorry. I picked Magnolia Cafe. It is my favorite restaurant, mm. period. Now, I have several other restaurants that are very close, and some of those are in my honorable mention list, but I picked Magnolia for this spot because um, they have the best plate ever. It is called the Magnolia Omelet. I disagree. You are in, you are entitled to your incorrect opinion. It is magnificent there's not even any meat in it and i am not like by any stretch of the imagination a vegetarian or anything like that i like meat but this plate has no meat in it and it's amazing it's an omelet that comes with like tomatoes and avocados and black olives and cheese and they have this lemon sauce that goes on top of it that is it's just amazing you get two sides i usually pick the english muffin and fruit and i ask them to hold the pineapple and put a lot more strawberries because that's what i like and i will devour that and enjoy every second of it I also order it with what's called an orange fizz, which is like a mixture of orange juice and Sprite. And it just goes perfectly with the meal. It is very, very, very good. Everything they have there is good. I always order the same thing, but I will take bites of everybody else's stuff. And it's, it's always good. They have a, they have a very eclectic type atmosphere. Um, It's open all day. In fact, their slogan I always remember is sorry, we're open 24, eight. I don't know exactly what that means, but I love it. It's on their matchbooks. Um, the waiters and waitresses are, are like funky, tattooed and pierced, and it's just a cool crowd that you get there. It's a good mix. Um, I have memories there as a freshman at UT. That's the first time I went. There are two locations. I like the one on South Congress better um, just because of the atmosphere, and it's right down the street from the food trucks, actually. And um, <coughs> Excuse me, speaking of food. 
And, uh, you know, I, I have memories there as a freshman. I went there early on in my freshman year at UT. I remember um, my neighbor, Megan, got a Coke spilled down her back. And I have a lot of memories of going there now with you guys. Um, as part of our, our trips to Austin, we always go to Magnolia Cafe at least one time. At least. So, Jet, what, what do you think about Magnolia? What I think, how did <laughs> Megna spill on her back? The waiter, a waitress, dropped um, a drink off of a tray and it spilled all down her back. Was she, like, mad? She wasn't very happy. How did she act? I, I Surprised and then, um, I guess, a little upset. And then we got over it and we still had fun. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts from you, uh, oh, sorry. Hershey, on Magnolia Cafe? Yes, I must say that they do have very good queso. I think it's called the Sonora Queso. And it comes with everything in it. And uh, my favorite thing to eat there is the Eggscape, which is by far the best thing on the menu. Uh, not even close. I think Cade would have put this on his list. We're here, here too. <gasps> and I have a memory of Cade um, from there because he ordered the, I think they were gingerbread pancakes when he was really little and, yeah. and really loved them. And we ate outside and there was a bird there that kept picking on the plate and Kate thought it was hilarious. Do you remember that, Jed, or were you too little? I remember, and you, a bird also did it from another restaurant, also with a like a flamingo thing, thingy thing. A flamingo. Yeah, you remember that restaurant was a long time ago. Bird came and just swiped some food up, and we were at that flamingo thingy. I, I, and I don't flamingo remember. Flamingo on the cover when mom. It was a tournament that Kate was at. And mom wasn't there. We went to a flamingo restaurant, and <laughs> she wasn't there. And then a bird kept and came and took away food. Period. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Any other thoughts on Magnolia Cafe? Nope. Jet, you got any thoughts on Magnolia? It's my number two. Ah, you're not supposed number to tell three. us. Yeah. Yes. Number no. Three. No. If, number three. If, <laughs> number three. <laughs> if. If what's your number three, dude? Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> number three dude, today. Fine. Number three. My number three is Domino's <laughs> because their pizza is so freaking good. Honestly, that white cheese <laughs> and that Canadian bacon with this, that crust, with the salt, not salt, buttery. Stuff. It is so good. Are you sure you thought about your lease or your list thoroughly? Yes, Matt. Uh, Domino's <laughs> has amazing pizza. Pizza. <laughs> okay. Uh, interesting choice, Jed. I know you're a big pizza fan, and there are lots of options for you to choose from. I am a bit surprised you picked Domino's. I will say, I always think about Domino's pizza when I watch uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Are you with me on that? Are you just going to sit there stick out your... Nobody can see you sticking I'm, out your I'm tongue. I'm thinking, okay? I'm thinking. Um, okay, so you like the pizza from there that has the Canadian bacon, and it's the white sauce, not the one with the regular tomato. I know which one you're talking about because I order it for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I, you know... It's weird to me that you would think of Domino's when you're watching Ninja Turtles. When I'm watching I Ninja know. Turtles, I think of like a New York... Thin crust, cheesy, big slice of ooey gooey pizza. I do not think of Domino's. Well, there, I have two and a half reasons why I think of Domino's. Number one, when I watched Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, we would sometimes order pizza and we didn't get New York pizza. We ordered Domino's. So I associate what I was eating at the time with that. Two, Domino's had a, um, what's it called? A, uh, uh, like a, an advertising association with Ninja Turtles when it came out. They were on the commercials and they had it like a special for, you know, ordering Ninja Turtle pizza. pizza. And number three, I think it was the first one. I know the second one was different because they had Kino, but I think the first one had a Domino's pizza being delivered through the grate. I don't think so. He was, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, Jeff? Yeah, he was under. He was he under says, the grate and he, he put, passed the pizza through. I'm pretty sure it was yeah, Domino's. Yeah, he gave like... A address and it was like a sewer pipe and he said this and the guy didn't even care that his hand was green. Are you talking about the Asian guy? No, that's the second. Oh, one. that's the second. That's the one. second. I'm talking about the first one. They pass a know, pizza I through remember. the grate. I'm like 90 percent sure it's a Domino's pizza that gets passed through. We'll there. have yeah. to look into that. Now, if I'm wrong, 
I would expect our listeners to let us know a million times on our Facebook page. Fair enough? Fair. Fair. Okay. Any other thoughts on dominoes before we move on? No thoughts at all. Okay. Uh, Hershey, what is your number three? My number three would be a place in Arizona that we found, and it's called Papagayo. They have the best sizzling fajitas you could ever, 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 ever eat. I think they marinate the meat in like wine, but you sure do get drunk off of it when you eat it. <laughs> Talk about food coma, but that is by far the best fajitas I will ever, ever, ever taste. I am with you 100% on that one. Papagayo, it was right next to our apartments that we lived in in the our foothills. first year of... Uh, of marriage out in Tucson, Arizona. Cade was an infant. Jet was a, a dream in my mind and not really in your mom's until I convinced her. <laughs> and yeah, we should, we, we would have gone there a lot more, but it was, you know, we were a newly married couple and we had a baby and we were on a budget and it's kind of expensive there, but I got to tell you, it's worth every penny. It is mm. amazingly good. Um, I have it on my list as an honorable mention. It didn't make my top five, and, and you'll see why when I get to the top of my list. But, yeah, very, very good. An order of steak fajitas and a cold beer at Papagayo, not much is any better than that. It was so good that for the, all the mommies out there, you know when it's time to eat. You know when it's time to eat. Um, your newborn decides to cry or go to the bathroom. Kate happened to do a number two as our... Uh, fajitas were arriving at the table and I remember telling Chris oh he's just gonna have to sit there for just a second so I can enjoy my fajitas I think that's the second time we when we came to visit what type of name is Papa Gallo like a papa is a dad but is Gallo's even a word why would you mush them together well Jet I think that maybe because it's a Mexican restaurant they might use um, a word that is not English in their title well, you never told me that. Well, we are talking about fajitas, fajitas which is Mexican food. Yeah. Fajitas. So, Jet. What are, what are fajitas? Okay, so like when you grill steak meat or chicken meat and you put it in a tortilla and you can, most people put bell peppers and onions and cheese or sour cream or guacamole or whatever. Um, they sometimes, you, you know, uh, Colton? Oborni, he always orders fajitas. They bring it out. It's like sizzling on a skillet, and you can see the steam coming off. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, nobody can see you shaking your head. He's nodding his head yes. He's had recognition that he knows what fajitas Wait, are. no. I, you said skillet, and that's like a dumb rapper name I made up. In. So you're not paying attention to what I'm no. saying? I, I am. I am. I am. Okay. So you don't um, – I you've been to Papagayo once, Jet. Uh, you were little. We were coming back from San Francisco – on our, driving back to Dallas, we st we stopped in Tucson for a night, and we went to Papagayo. I'm sure you don't remember it, so you can't speak on it. However, knowing your taste in food, I think you would probably order tacos, since you love tacos so much. Or a quesadilla. You have any comment on tacos while we're talking about it, Jet? I used to hate tacos, but now I love them so much. What changed your mind on tacos? I all started like a, in. February, I think, when grandpa. So that was like five months ago. Four yeah, or five months ago. My my grandpa came back with Dairy Queen. I tried the taco. I loved it, and that's it. Dairy Queen tacos changed your life. Life. Well, can I just add that having no lettuce on a taco changed his life? Or tomatoes? Yeah, just meat and cheese, and that's it. That is not a taco, by the way. That is a taco too. And also, a taco with lettuce and tomato, they're separate foods. Don't mush them together. Can I, can I tell a story about a taco that had one little tomato on it real quick for everybody? Sure. Okay. Cade um, and Jet and I were in Lubbock or Amarillo? I think it was Amarillo. Yeah, it was Amarillo, Texas. Uh, this was in, it would have been in this year, actually, back in February. We were there for the state wrestling tournament. Cade won again for the fifth consecutive year state championship. And we're driving back and there's not many food options between Amarillo and Dallas, especially that stretch uh, right when you get out of Amarillo, there's nothing for a while. So we got on, actually we went, do you remember Jet? We went to Palo Duro Canyon first, 
We drove down there and we hiked for a couple hours. And that it was, was the funnest thing ever. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, for those who don't know, Palo Duro Canyon is uh, the second largest canyon, I think, in North America, maybe in the world. I think it was North America, uh, behind the Grand Canyon, obviously. And it's beautiful. And we hiked down into the canyon and back out, and it was great. But we were hungry afterwards, and we were looking for food options. And the first kind of small town we got to had a couple of them. There was a Dairy Queen and a subway right across the street. So Jet's newfound love for um, Dairy Queen tacos was in full gear, full mode. So we stopped at Dairy Queen. We got ice cream and we got tacos. Cade got some weird chicken and dumplings thing. And I don't even remember what I got. All of it was greasy and not very good. Um, we were in the Mine middle of was nowhere. Good. It was just... I don't think yours was good. <laughs> what happened was Jet started eating ice cream. I think you had a Sunday. Yeah, a Sunday. A Sunday. He was eating a Sunday. The tacos came out. They were really, really greasy. The bottom, you couldn't even pick them up. They were like falling apart. And I forgot, as uh, Jet's discovery of love for tacos was new, I forgot to say no tomatoes or lettuce, just meat and cheese. So Jet spent about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes picking out every little piece of lettuce. You did it. Whoa. You. I blame it on you. Well, there was a tomato left behind, a sliver of a tomato. And Jet took a bite and had this look on his face that his mom and I recognized right away. That means, oh, great, the dude's about to puke. And then I I took a bite of ice cream. Then you got a big bite of ice cream to try to wash it out. (laughs) And then you drank down a bunch of whatever your drink was, which was probably Coke or lemonade or something that's not water. And you had all of this different kind of food and drink in your mouth at the same time. And then it all came back out for like 15 minutes. I barbed and then I barbed again. And then I finally all sto- over the stop. place. Mom wasn't there, so and then I, I was stuck again. cleaning <laughs> it up. It was a gigantic mess. It was everywhere. And then we went across the street to Subway and got food there instead. Is that an accurate retelling of this story? Yes, it is good. Except I went. <laughs> Okay, so lesson, uh, my lesson learned was do not leave even one tomato in Jet's food or I will really, really, really regret it. Mom, you have any comment on that story? No, I wasn't there, so I can't really comment on it, but I feel you. I feel your pain. Yeah. Okay, so what was that, Jet? Was that your number three? Oh, my gosh, the paper. Yeah, he already said yes. number three. Okay. Wait, I already said Domino's. Yeah. Domino. Oh, yeah, we somehow we got onto tacos from there. Then I said mine. Which was? Papagayo. Papagayo. Oh, we're on to my number three then, huh? Okay, my number three favorite place to eat is, drum roll please, bed. Yes, I agree. I love to eat in bed, and here's why. My days are long. I work long hours often during wrestling season. I go straight from work to practice. I don't get home until 9.30. I'm still in my work clothes. I haven't seen my wife. I haven't seen my other little guy, Jet. I'm hungry and I'm tired and I want to watch Netflix or baseball and chill the F out. So I go and I grab something, usually very unhealthy, and I lie down in my bed and I drink and I eat and it's amazing and it's my happy place. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're talking about restaurants. That is not what we said. We We said the five best places. Places to eat. Oh. Yeah, you have to think out of the box. Well, what food do you like to eat in your so-called bed? It cheese nips. Cheese nips. It doesn't really Gummy matter. Gummy bears. Gummy bears. It doesn't really matter. Cereal. It's the place that makes it for me. Cereal, yeah. Cheez-Its. Keep going. Chips. Keep going. Whatever he... Sandwich. Whatever Jet doesn't finish for dinner, he usually consumes shortly after. These. This is all true. I'm not Gatorade. denying any of it. Rolos. In fact, we have these we have these nightstands that I don't know where we got, probably Craigslist, and they're they're pretty big. And I we have, actually purchased these at the Walmart neighborhood when we lived in I'm talking about our nightstands. Oh, no, I bought those at a garage sale. Okay. And they're pretty big. They're a good size. I have a little fold out table. This is what you were talking about that we got at Walmart. Yes. That a lot of people would eat as like kind of a TV dinner type tray where you'd fold it out and plop it in front of the couch. I have it like adjacent to my nightstand so that I double the size of my nightstand <laughs> so that it can hold all of the remotes, my phone, my charger, and 
my snacks that I get to eat oh, in bed. Oh, that thing, I know. It's actually right here right now. We're using it to record. But you know what I'm talking about, Jet? Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on my choice of eating in bed? Jet, you don't get to eat in bed because you make a giant mess. And I don't anymore. Okay. <laughs> that is a lie. When was the last time I spilled all over the floor? It's not that. It's like even on those occasions when mom and I say, yeah, sure, go ahead and eat in bed. Well, it's when mom says it. I never say it. I come home and my bed is full of crumbs. Jets, crumbs. Because you take the smallest bites in the world, and let's say it's chips, okay? This is a perfect example. You pull out one chip from the bag. You take a tiny little bite, and so the crumbs are going to go somewhere because you're not getting them in your mouth and they're spilling on the bed. And I come home and I, it feels like I'm laying on sandpaper. Well, sandpaper could be comfortable. <laughs> I guess so. No, I don't think so. All right, we're going to move on from eating in bed. Jet, can you tell me your number two? Magnolias. We've already talked about it. I told you earlier. Okay. Hershey, can you tell me your number two? Salsalito. Good Sausalito one. in Coronado Island in, no. or no, it's in it's in Sausalito. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yes, we found that place when we were walking. I don't know what it, what that place is called. Like a, it was like a like a boardwalk kind boardwalk of kind of area, and they had the best tacos. Which taco did we like the best? I mean, they had variation, different variations of tacos, but I think the one that we liked was the brisket one. I, I like the pork one the best, but they have different kinds. And they also had um, an oyster taco, which is really, really good if you really like fried oysters because they don't overcook them and it's still kind of like that gelatinous raw squishy taste in your mouth and it's like the biggest oyster you could ever it's squishy it's so squishy it's good it's It's like raw you can you have a little bit of the crunch from the breading but then inside it's still kind of raw it's like tasting shrimp it doesn't it it, it doesn't change the taste but it's just squishy (gasps) that that you know what speaking of shrimp i think that is my favorite one is the brisket and the shrimp one the shrimp tacos but that it's they have the best, the best tacos. So much mistake, shrimp tacos. I high five on that, brother. Shrimp and tacos do not go okay, together. Okay, my part, my partner in crime as far as seafood goes is not here with me, so I'm getting ganged up here because Cade is a seafood lover like his mama. Jet, these two tell us chobos. How you feel about this. Come here. These two chobos here are meat and potato kind of pizza bread carb kind of guys. What do you, what do you think about this, Jet? All right, so. What you're saying, a taco, a, a Mexican food is really good, and you combine a seafood with Mexican food. Yes. It's disgusting. No I, way. I, I, no I think it's a load way. of bull. I like seafood, but seafood and something else combined, that's, yeah, that's bull. All right, yeah, all bull. right, all right. Well, that's not my number two. Sausalito. Uh, I, I love Sausalitos. I, not the seafood part, obviously. When I had it for the first time, I was blown away. I thought it wasn't going to be that good because it's kind of like a cheesy play on the city they're in of Sausalito, which has a lot of like really fancy food. It's a very upscale um, yacht type community. People live on yachts and boathouses and they park them there. There's a lot of very expensive jewelry and art galleries in the area and fancy restaurants. And we were walking and we found a little place called Salsa Litos, like S-A-L-S-A, like, you know, like Mexican food salsa. And I thought, let's do it. And I, it was so good. It was so good. We went back there again on that same trip. Um, you went back one other time without me, right? You went with your sisters. Yes, yeah. I did. You're right. And I wasn't there for that one. I do remember the, loving the tacos a mm. lot. And I remember ordering watermelon juice. Oh, their watermelon really juice is really good. So, yeah, very good choice for your number two. I, that was another one I had on my honorable mention list. Um, but I only picked one kind of like sit down restaurant and it was Magnolia Cafe. So okay. my number two, unless you guys want to talk about Sausalito some more. I think I might know your number one. I could be wrong. You do know my number one, but we're on <laughs> number two right now. Number two, Jet, my number two favorite place to eat, the movie theater. And I think I picked this because there's not much that can top an all out night at the theater. And I'm not talking about the dollar theater that we go to. I mean, when we go to the real theater and we spend like a thousand dollars on our movie tickets and real popcorn, a giant tub of popcorn 
a gigantic Coke that no person should ever consume in one night, but we do, and candy and good times. I don't know if you've been there, but I've been to this theater where it has tables for you to eat. You can you can literally order while you're yes. watching a movie. It is so awesome. You mean that like, like is, an eye pick? Yeah. That's yeah, the best that's kind. awesome. I love it. That is really cool. That's not specifically what I'm talking about. I'm talking about junk candy and pop junk food that you get at the movie theater at a normal theater like when we went to see the force awakens on opening night and there was a bazillion people there and we got all this food and popcorn and candy we were just we just had it all spread out most of the time jet can you tell me how do we get food at the theater what do we do most of the time um hopefully any workers are not hearing this we sneak the food we put them in pockets whatever bags whatever we sneak the food we're thieves yeah. we're not thieves we're not stealing their food we're not stealing their food we're bringing our own goodies to the movie yeah usually i wear some like cargo shorts with extra pockets and i'm loading those up with whatever we picked out at the nearest gas station by the movie theater or what we ever, whatever we had in the pantry, um, but I think it, that's fun also. But I'm talking about the nights when we just go all out and we just buy the popcorn and the food and the candy. What's your favorite candy to get at the theater? Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. What about you? Double cheeseburger. That, <laughs> that is not, not a, a typical candy option. I don't eat option. candy. I never. I I'm not a candy person. But when I went with my sisters to um, the theater. We didn't want just ordinary popcorn. We brought Wendy's. So oh, you, Lord. you went and got Wendy's and you go to the movie theaters. You pull out a burger in yeah. the middle of the theater. You got to wait till it's dark and the music starts. Then you can unwrap that burger and mm-hmm. stuff them fries in your mouth. What if a... a, a a person's next to you, like, hey, can you settle down? Oh, is I that know. a burger? Yeah, I know. They're just because they're jealous and they wish that they thought the same thing. I have brought tacos to the theater before, um, but that's not what I'm talking about. Here, people, you guys are totally under, undercutting my my point about going to the movie theater and eat junk, eating junk thoughts. food. For candy, I like to get uh, Milk Duds and Reese's Pieces, and I think that's because of E.T. that I associate Reese's Pieces with the movie theater. But I always like to do that. Who cares how you feel afterwards, right? You go home and you feel like crap, but it was so worth it because of your night out at the theater. Yeah? You agree? I never feel like crap. Well, you're still young. Wait wait till you get a little bit older, yeah? I'm never going to get older. Yeah, we all feel that way when we're young. Okay, uh, ready to move on to our number one. My number one. I'm going to toss my list to the side. My number one. Number one. Is. Number one. Is. Number one. Is. Mama's Pizza. (laughs) It is so good. It's the best buffet I've ever tasted. It's the best (laughs) restaurant I've ever tasted. Um. By not tasting the walls, but like just actually tasting the food. It is so good. I love it because you can just you can just pay it and then you can eat as much as you want. And there's no limit. How many pizza places were on your top five? Four out of the five, I believe. I know CC's. I, I heard Domino's, Domino's, Mama's Pizza. That's at least sixty percent of your list is pizza places. Ninety. All of them are pizzas except for D- Dickies. Uh, what was your other one that I'm forgetting? I got CC's. Dickies, Domino's, Magnolia's. Magnolia's is not Mama's a pizza, pizza place. So three out of your oh, five. What? Oh, I was oh. thinking of Home Slice. Dated. it. <laughs> I was wondering why you didn't put Home Slice on your list. I met, I, I met Home Slice. Oh, okay, so I that would be 80% of your top five list is pizza. So, okay, so Mama's Pizza, let's talk about that. It's been around for a long time. It was there when I was growing up in Plano. I used to go there on my off-campus lunch when I was in high school. It's a staple of the uh, you know old-school Plano community. Very, very, very good pizza for a buffet. I'll give you that. When you're talking buffet pizza, it's it's the, the top of my list. It didn't make my list, obviously, but uh, very good. And they have a really good salad bar, and their cheesy bread is very good also. You got any thoughts on Mama's Pizza, Mama? Yes, they have really good cinnamon rolls and the pizza for the price that you know you pay for it's it's better quality than CC's 
And they do have like an amazing salad bar. Like their salad bar, me and Chris were just talking about this, is way better than like your typical Jason's Deli and Super Salad. I mean, it's just, it's fresh and it's, you know, like Chris says, it's in it's in Plano and it, you just have that family vibe and they have TVs there and you can watch the game. Who goes to Super Salad? That was like 2008. <laughs> that was not 2008. That was this year. You're so 2000 and late. Well, man, stick with the popularity trends. I, I don't do trends. I do what I like. And I, you know, maybe that makes me an old man, but that's just how I roll. Um, let's talk about Home Slice for a minute here because that's what you meant to put as your number two and you, yeah. you accidentally wrote down Magnolia. Home Slice is another restaurant on South Congress in Austin. So we've had a lot of that featured on our list here. Another pizza place. I would have, if I were to have put a pizza place on my list, that's what I would have put. The pizza's really good. Probably not as good as Luigi's, but close and the atmosphere is way more fun i love how you guys uh you guys meaning you and Cade, get to get uh, play with dough balls before the food comes out that's a fun thing you guys get to do uh they have a ping pong table there you sit outside and the fence there is made out of old doors that they've like somehow squished together um there's always a long wait but it's always fun and we always go to get amy's ice cream afterwards right Okay, yeah, but here's something about Luigi's, okay? To me, Luigi's is one of my least favorite pizza places. Get out of my face with that bull. Serious, that is bull. It is not good. How do you think it's so good? It's fantastic. They have the best cheese. The cheese is like top notch. And their crust is like the best crust. It's not too thick and it's thin enough. Jet wouldn't know about that because he never eats the crust. I actually do eat the crust only if it's good. The only crust you eat is the one out of your nose when you pick it. Hey, I have never ate a burger. Do kids in your school eat their burgers? Well, I've seen somebody pick their burger and give it to another person. Okay, let's... They... No, I want to hear about this. Tell this story. Somebody picked their... Was it their sister? Yeah, it was sister and brother. They always pick their nose and eat it. Both of them are kind of annoying. Well, they're not uh, annoying. It's just Joseph's kind of a tom girl. <laughs> tom boy? No, he's saying he's girly. Oh, a tom girl. <laughs> yeah, and they're not going to hear this, but um, Joseph, he picks his nose, he gives it to Hannah, and Hannah eats it. That is disgusting. Although, I'm kind of hungry, so I would consider it right now. Okay, moving on. Your number two was Home Slice. Your number one was, what was your number one again? Mama's, Mama's Pizza. pizza. Um, Hershey, do you have anything else to say about all of these pizza choices that are on Jet's list? No, no, not at all. Okay, well then let's move on. What is your number one? My number one would be my mama's cooking. There you go. My mama can cook anything. Now, this is not mama's pizza. This is like your mom, like your mother. This is my mother, my birth mother. (laughs) (laughs) She can make something out of nothing. I mean, she is the best cook in the whole world. And there's nothing that she makes that I don't like. So if we're we're sticking to the format of the list, five to one list here, would you say then that your number one place to eat would be your mother's kitchen table? Is that- Absolutely. Okay. I get what you're saying now. So um, what what one dish in particular, if you're going to eat, let, pretend we're on our way to your mom's house right now and that kitchen table with the, it's a wood table and it's got a glass lining on top of it and there's wobbly chairs that have been sat in by many people over the years that are all sitting around it and the dishwasher is open <laughs> and it's not used to wash dishes, but it's open anyways and they're put in there and the counters are full and you're waiting, you're about to sit down and eat. What is the one dish that you would pick to have to eat tonight right now pancet it's a noodle dish pancet canton pancet she makes the best pancet and i've had many 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 pancets before coming from or being a philip philippine girl i've tasted my aunts i've tasted friends and no one makes it i mean no one makes it like my mother jet do you have a favorite filipino dish or something that you've eaten at grandma's house that you remember pancet 
Ponset. See, I I am uh, I'm the first one to admit when it comes to Filipino dishes, I'm picky because a lot of them involve seafood, and I'm not a seafood eater. I wouldn't say I'm a picky eater in general, but I do not like seafood, so it's hard for me to find a, a, a Filipino dish that I really enjoy because of that. However, I will admit your mom does make really good food, and she goes out of her way to make dishes for me since she knows that I don't she does I don't eat seafood and I and she does and he know and she knows that you don't like onions onions too yeah so she'll make me special dishes it's very sweet and I always when I go there everybody's eating on paper plates <laughs> I get the royal treatment she brings he, me out like a real glass he plate. gets a real freaking plate I'm spoiled when so I go spoiled. there spoiled and I got to say, uh, fortunately for me, as your husband, you have inherited your mother's talent for cooking. You make the best food in the world. And that is sweet. And your caldereta, which is another Filipino dish, I could eat all day, every day. <laughs> that If this was not top five places to eat and it was top five foods, that would be one through five for me. I would put it as every choice because it is fantastic. And I love it. That's sweet. I also enjoy eating at your mom's uh table too it's a fun place to it eat it's fun. it's like you know it's like the movies when you see like um you know a movie with a family sharing eating around the table and just sharing memories stories. and talking that's what your mom's dinner table is like and i really do enjoy that it's a very good choice jet Thank do you have you. do you have anything to say about that what do you say about grandma's cooking well i haven't eaten it that much so i don't have that much to say about it i mean mom's cooking it a lot though <laughs> she's pretty good isn't she good she's the best she is it's funny because because Cade's friends will come over he's got a like his what do they call it his squad that will come over (laughs) and they have a few times and like they always have fun here because we kind of let them do whatever they want but the word on the street at uh, Chandler Elementary is that uh, Cade's mom has is the best cook in the world right am I right about that Jet Okay, he said right. <laughs> Just really far from the mic. Okay, so anything else to say before I move on to my number one? No, I'm ready for your number one. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to try to guess it. Okay, guess. That's okay. a good one. Um, Is it like Col- Colorado something? Colorado? Uh, that's what I thought yeah, his number one it? was going to be. No, because that's not a place to eat. Uh, yeah, you and me were not thinking the right way. <laughs> no, no, I remember a restaurant like... Coloretta, like that's... Caldoretta is a Filipino a dish, dish that I, I love I, to eat. I know, like, it started with cola or something. Okay, well, I'll give you a clue. My number one is not a restaurant. What is it? It's a place to eat, and it is the beach. I agree. Okay, so here's here's my thoughts on this. You're already having fun because you're on vacation, right? You're not... I'm not at work. You're not at school. We're outside. We're having fun. You're playing in the ocean. I'm throwing you around. We're throwing the football. We come back, we play in the sand. Maybe we build something or just dig a big hole. Then we go back in the water and then you get tired and maybe I take a nap, which is fun. And eventually you get really hungry, right? Because you're just being so active and playing around. So you come back, you pull out your sandwich, you pull out your chips, you open up the cooler and you pull out an ice cold Coke and it's perfection, right? It Nothing tastes better than the sandwich and chips that if you're eating it at your kitchen table, eh, it's like any other meal. But you're at the beach and it tastes really good. Am I right? You're Hot right. pockets. Hot pockets. That's a good one. We've done lots of different food at the beach. In fact, the one in, we would take like un, unexpected or unplanned trips to Galveston. And there's a McDonald's right by the beach. And we get chicken nuggets. And those are the best chicken nuggets you eat because you're on the beach. I think it's just because you're so hot and, like you said, active and swimming all day. So anything sounds good but being a kid i remember making my mom packing like punset sandwiches <laughs> and those were like the best meals and if there was like a chicken place that's nearby well you know us filipinos have to have something fried so we always had some kind of like fried chicken whether it was from churches or kfc and those by far are the best things to eat on the beach yeah, everything's good on the beach jet you got anything to say about that yeah, like on the commercials, have you seen it? Like it's an advertisement for like a Coke when it like is watering down and it's <laughs> on the beach. It's so good. They do a really good job at that. Coke, in my opinion, has the the most effective advertising because they always make it look so good. 
And like when, when I go to the theater, I associate it with Coke. When I go to the beach, I associate it with Coke. And it's not even not even my favorite soft drink. I like Pepsi better. But Coke is the first thing that comes to mind. For you, Dad, you're always in the mood for Coke. Go home, drink Coke. Go to the beach, drink Coke. <laughs> go to work, go, drink Coke. Yeah, and I never get to drink it because it's so bad for you. So you're right. When I do get to drink one, uh, I really do thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, anybody have any honorable mention? Mm, honorable mention? No. I do. <gasps> wait, wait, do you wait, go? wait, wait. Okay. I've never done this, but I've always wanted to do it. I want to eat on a roof. It seems pretty <laughs> fun. Like, you can, maybe if you live in a nice house, you can have, like, a good view. It seems pretty good. Or or even a building. What about, like, a balcony? Would that be better than a roof? Because, you know, Mm-mm. you can't no, fall no, and break no. your neck. I know. I know what he means. Like it's, a building roof. Yeah, like the like top really of the roof, high. you know, so that way he can enjoy like the scenery. Yeah. And, and enjoy a meal. It's like two things I love. Oh, maybe eating. I know where to take you for your birthday. Where? The Reunion Tower. It's Ooh, yeah, I've never been there either. Is yeah. it, how far is it? Well, do you know in downtown Dallas when we drive and there's that building that it it looks like a, a lollipop? It's like long there's and like then a there's ball a ball on top, on top. And it lights up. Depending if the Mavs are playing or the Rangers. Well, you can, it's oh, a rest. Oh, oh. Yeah. The I ball inside the ball is a restaurant. And I mean, what better view can you get? Can, can Ollie come? Yeah, Ollie can come. We, we need to, we need to plan that. All right. Anything else? Any more honorable mention? I have one. Okay. It's this place in Garland. It's literally a hole in the wall, and it's called Crazy Catfish. Let me tell you about this catfish place. They have the best bone-in catfish. And I know for those people who think or do not like eating cat fried catfish, like, like, like a whole eat, catfish. Oh, you eat fish or something like that? Oh, they have, it's by far the best. The batter is very light. It's not thick it's not beer batter it's made out of cornmeal and they have the best lemonade and they have really really good fries so that's my honorable mention and not to mention it it holds very good memories because we used to eat there as kids go ahead jet you got one um let me think while you're thinking i'm gonna go ahead and list i had one more we talked about i had three we already talked about two of them my last one is uh, a restaurant. It's a Mexican restaurant. It's still around, but not in its original form. I and know. the original one, it's called Tino's, yeah. or as Jet used to say, Tino's. Tino's too. Tino's too is what it is now. But the original Tino's was in Collin Creek Mall in Plano, and it's, it's since shut down. Really cool looking restaurant inside the mall. They used to have live music. There was a, a Mexican lady, her name was Cherokee, who used to sing, and she moved to California and left my life forever, and I was sad. But they have the best salsa, really fun atmosphere. The food is okay. Some of it's really good. Some of it's not. But anyway, I, I missed that place, so it made my honorable mention list. That is a good one. All right, before we go, uh, I have some news that I've been thinking about for our next episode. Wait, wait, wait. Can you remember this? Because we're not quite done yet. We have to do the worst Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you after. Okay, Jet. What do you have for your worst choice? The worst. The worst. My worst choice. My arch enemy, Taco Bell. <laughs> I have so bad memories there. I ate one chip and I threw up all over the ground. That seems to be a trend for you and throwing up your food. But yeah, I do remember being at Taco Bell and he did not like it at all. I, I, you know, I don't remember you throwing up there. I do know you always say you don't like it there. I feel like there's a lot of places that you're like, I don't like going there because every time I do, I get a headache. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taco Bell gives you a headache and you threw up there. Double whammy. Uh, I'm not a fan of Taco Bell either, but I can eat it. It's okay. There are just much better fast food taco options than, than Bell. Eat great, even late. Uh, what about you, Hershey? What is your... The worst. The worst for me is not a particular place, but it's um, probably my least type of food to eat, which is Indian food. Maybe it's because of the spices are too overwhelming, but I did try um, an Indian restaurant with um, my sister and her boyfriend at the time. And it was all right. I liked the naan, but I think it's just their spices is just too overwhelming. And depending on how they make their curry, um, I do like the Filipino version of curry, but I think typically the way, you know, 
the restaurants make it. I'm just, I'm not a fan. Yeah, like you're thinking like, you're, you're probably thinking like, well, like you still like it. How's your least favorite? She's not a picky eater. She basically loves everything. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, and I'm actually surprised that you don't like Indian food. I, you know, I'm more cautious about um, different ethnic foods than you are, but I actually really like Indian food. I've only had it a couple times. Uh, I also went with an ethnic type food for my worst, though. Ethnic. ethnic means of a different, um, like foreign, like from a different country or, or culture. Um, I, po- I picked for my worst any Chinese buffet. <laughs> And I, I don't, I, Chinese food is fine. It's not my favorite, but I can eat it. But Those for whatever good. reason, Chinese buffets, I, you know, I see the food and it looks like it's been sitting out for like three days. There's, it, it, it just seems you, you pay like $11 for a Chinese buffet. I feel like I could get two really good sandwiches for $11 and be way happier. Uh, the food is not high quality. It's just very high quantity and you eat a lot of it and you feel like crap and it doesn't even taste that good. And I am not a fan of any Chinese buffet. I grew up on Chinese buffet, so um, I would have to disagree with your worst. Um, but you're right. There are there are some restaurants that, you know, you go in the, you go in the buffet line, you're like, mm, that looks about five hours old. But the ones that we go to, you know. Like it, Great Wall? The Great Wall. There's a high turnover rate because there are so many people there. So, you know, the food is not sitting well. But like you said, it's qu- it's the quality over quantity. It's the opposite. I mean, You're- the quantity over quality. But still, you get, I mean, you know, you get what you pay for. Listen, I'm not a light eater. I eat a lot of food. You know, I'm a big guy. So I get the quantity piece of it. But I would still choose you know, good quality food that I enjoy over mass quantity that is just not good. I know, but I think is I think for us is when I mean I guess is because you know with my sisters we tend we gravitate towards Chinese food if we're wanting a mess up meal is because you get a little bit of everything. I mean, especially a little in bit these, of rat, a little um, bit of dog. <laughs> there you go. But you know, I I can see I, I know that you're not a big buffet Chinese buffet guy. Yeah, well, I've said I had my two cents on that. Jet, do you have anything to add? No, you're good. All right. Well, unless there's any final thoughts, we can wrap this up. Um, news. So I've been thinking our next episode. I think, Mom, do you want to do our special guest because Kate's not here? Sure. Our next episode, I've been thinking, is a top five favorite Rangers of all time. Okay, so you went a little bit off course there from what we talked about. I like that though. I love the Texas the Rangers. Range five only. Mom That's loves the Rangers, be so this will so be so hard. This will be a great topic. I like that, Jet. Very good. Very good choice. Awesome. Um, well, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen. Uh, please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash five to one podcast. The five and the one are numbers, not spelled out. Give us your opinions there. Let us know why you agree on the places we like to eat or why you think we're idiots and our food is gross. Uh, we welcome all feedback. It's also a great spot to leave us ideas for future episodes like Jet's great idea that he just had about the top five Texas Rangers of all time. Uh, also, please take the time to give us a review on iTunes. Uh, we welcome all feedback, and it helps our podcast gain exposure. We especially like good feedback, so make it good. Uh, we're also working on getting a few more avenues of communication set up. I know I've talked about this for th- several episodes now. We're actually really close to having that set up. So stay tuned and we'll fill you in on those. Uh, and like Jet said, and he's going to remind us again, please join us next time on 5 to 1 for our discussion on... Top 5 Rangers of all time. And that's it. Since Kate's not here, I'll say it. Love you. <laughs> Goodbye.